Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Mola Robiwomi. I'm the pastor in charge of the Redeemed Christian Church of God's City of Mercy and the Visionary for Kingdom Jewels International. God bless you. This is another Friday. It's the time for our marriage talk. We thank God for another opportunity to see today. It is not by our design, but just God that has been faithful to us. We thank God for all our children. We thank God for all our homes. We thank God for all uh, our husbands and wives. <laughs> I will say glory be to God. It's another Friday. Do we always have something to talk about? Yeah, as long as homes are on earth. And we say thank you for to our God for giving us another opportunity to talk. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We give you glory. For all our homes, we say thank you. For all our children, we appreciate you. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we believe, Daddy, the Lord, you will speak to each and every one of us today. You will turn our homes to heaven and earth indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We are going to talk about love of money. The love of money in homes, in our lives, even in general. As we do so, God will speak to us and give us understanding on how to deal with money and not let it affect our lives or dominate us. God bless us in Jesus' name. We are going to look at the book of um, First Timothy chapter 6. I'll uh, read verses 6 to 10. First Timothy 6, 6 to 10. The Bible says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we will carry nothing out. <laughs> and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covert, coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. We know money can buy all things. Money can turn situations around. As much as the Bible tells us that he that does not work should not eat. The Bible says the love of money is the beginning of all evil. Love of money is the beginning of all evil. So if we look at that statement, we just want to relate that. We want to put that in view of our homes. Our children, our parents, our husbands. What are we supposed to do when it comes to money? Jesus Christ himself says, it is very difficult for those that put their trust in riches to go through, uh, to get, get into heaven. Money and our homes. Money. And people we deal with. If we allow money to be our guardian, our guide to everything, we will realize that all we do all the time is erring, just like the Bible says. And it can drive us away, not only from God, it can drive us away from our homes. So let's see what can we what should we do when it comes to money. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. This is not Bible study, but Bible is our base, even on the platform. On, I mean, when we're talking about our home, it is what does God say that matters, that matters most. Anyway, Proverbs 21, verse 5. The Bible says, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to pleasures, but of everyone that is hasty, only to want. 
Let's look at um, contemporary English of the same verse. It says, oh, I, I'm sure. Contemporary English. Yeah. Verse 5. It says, if you plan and work hard, you will have plenty. If you get in a hurry, you will end up poor. Planning. That little amount of money you have as a family, that little amount you have as a couple, you can sit down and plan together what to do with it. Don't be in a haste to do anything. Don't be in a hurry to buy anything. Don't be in a haste to spend money. Just like the Bible tells us. Planning in every situation of life, not only money, is very important. If you don't stand for anything or you do, if you don't have a target, everything will be the, the right. Uh, you, 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 you are throwing a dart at the wall and you don't have a target. Anytime you hit anything, you say, hey, I hit it. Well, if you have a target, it trains you to, to be persistent, to be patient, and to be focused. So as a family, we have little money or we have plenty of money. Whatever amount we have, we have to learn to plan. Planning. Don't just go to the store and buy all the clothes because they are on sale. Yes, you can buy things because they are on sale. I do that also. But I won't buy what I don't need and I won't buy what is not relevant. Ah, this clothes. Ah, I'm, I'm size 18. I'm size 16 or 18. And I see size 12. I say, ah, I will go and fit myself into this thing. It's on sale. I must buy it. It is not good buying. I say, as a family, no matter how much money we make, we have to plan. And planning is not only by one person. Two of you can come together. And when you have older children and um, their stakeholders too in that, in that spending, you can bring them in. Because some these kids, they know a lot of things that, uh, that we don't know. As in, when it comes to technology, this and that, and ideas. So we need to plan. That will reduce stress or strain on both parties or one party. When, because when we put, when, let's assume we have joint account and we put our money and somebody go and buy clothes, clothes, or the other one just go and buy a car without telling the other. And all other things will be suffering. No, we shouldn't do that. Then Proverbs 22, verse 3. It says, when you see, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 3, yeah. When you see trouble coming, don't be stupid and walk right into it. Be smite and hide. I will read uh, K uh, King James Version of that verse. It says, a prudent man foresees the evil and hide himself, but the simple person and are punished. Prudence. No matter how much money you have, it is very good to be prudent. Don't just waste money. Don't just lavish it. Don't just do whatever you think you... I mean, some people, you just wonder, why are they doing this? So it is very key for us to know that we need to be prudent. Manage what you are doing with that finance that you have. And prudence requires planning. Like I have said earlier, you need to be to plan and know what you are doing. Don't be don't be, just be wasting the money, do anything you like. Buy Gary, eat half because maybe it's a gift. You have a, a bowl of Gary, you have to make everything and then throw half away. What will you eat tomorrow? So we have to learn to be prudent. Plan and be prudent in spending that money that we have that we love so much. 
Now we can look at verse 9 of that same chapter, Proverbs 22. It says, He that had a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. You have to be generous. If you love money too much, you want to keep it to yourself. You don't want to give anybody. As much as you have to be prudent, you have to be generous. Give to the poor. Give to people that need it. Some people have so much money and no, they, nobody can say, ah, he gave me two dollars before or two naira. All they want to do is keep the money and spend it. Save, 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 save. I'm, I'm saving. I'm the, only, I'm the one owner of my money. I want to enjoy it so much. Buy a big car. When you fall, who will hold you? When you have problems, who will be there for you? Because it is those, uh, the Bible says there is he that scattereth. It. it becomes more. And there is he that holds beyond limits and tends to poverty. You have to be generous. You have to be a giver. You don't know when you will be generous to angels, just like um, Father Abraham. When the three men came to him, he didn't know they were the angels and the Lord, but he gave. Widow of Sarephat, and so on and so forth. God will help us. We have to be generous. Now, uh, I, another thing, the fourth thing, what to do when you have that money. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. It says you should not love money. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. It says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. If you love money or anything, you will never be satisfied. You will be saying, oh, when I buy a car, then when you buy your car, the car, by the time you buy that car, ah, it is getting out of status. Let me buy. And you will just realize that there is always a race to run, race to run, to spend money, to make more money. So you cannot afford to love money more than your spouse or God. Some people, they want to make all the money, especially here in the Western world. They forget Sunday. They forget God. Anytime, just call me in. I am in for any overtime. Because they need the, they want this money. If you love money, you will never be satisfied with it. So we need to be very careful. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, between 32 and 34, you can read 32 to 34. It says we have to seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. God himself will add other things. But if we are too particular about making money, buying this, I want to buy the best car, I want to build the best house, nobody says anything is wrong with that. But that shouldn't be over your relationship. That shouldn't be over God. You have to put God first, your home, number two. Then you can do whatever. But if you are not following the right pattern, you make money the number one. You will not see, it will affect your home. I can give examples, examples of homes that were affected by... Uh, uh, the love of money. You will go and buy the big house that your, your, your salary cannot afford. And you will find yourself not sleeping in that house. Because the husband will go in the morning, go and work till night. You are gone too. Then you will do overnight. Everybody is working. The house is empty. Why? Because you go and learn your cannibity or one year too. You go and pick what is, is beyond you. Good house is good. But you need planning. You need to be able to calculate. They will tell you the, 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 your mortgage or your rent should be like one third of your salary. Not maybe max of half. 
Not that the whole salary you are making for one job is the whole, the rent. Then you have to go and be working, working, working. And it will be affecting you. Or when we will get to Western world, especially, the husband will work in the morning, the wife will work in the night. They never see each other. It requires planning and prudence. <laughs> God will help us in Jesus' name. We have to, we need the Holy Spirit in all this situation. If we are not Christians, we, we, we can do what we like. But as children of God, we need the Holy Spirit to tell us this is getting far. That is why you hear some people saying they fall out of love because they never see their spouse. The, it, the only thing that will make them see each other is that they want to exchange key. And let's assume that is what you do during the week. What about weekends? What about creating days, your off days, to be the same time? You know? First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.10 First Corinthians 1 chapter 10, verse 10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye perfectly join together in the same mind and the same mind. Be in harmony. When it comes to how to make money, how to what to do with the money, how to spend it, you have to be in harmony. Share, share, share. It's not my money. It is my money, it is my body, it is my clothes, it is my, 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 my. The moment you both are married, you are one. The Bible says that the two shall come together and become one flesh. To become one flesh, you have to know that everything comes together to, for that to be so. Your money becomes for both of you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me go on. First Corinthians 12, 12 talks about supporting one another. There are times there, there is need for support. You can't love that money more than your husband. And say, the money I'm saving, I'll be saving this money up because of this, this, that one or two. And the husband is sick or the husband lost his job or something. And you refuse to support. As opposed to support one another. Or your wife. Or your children. You know? Hmm. Also... When I say there should be support, there should be harmony, there should be financial harmony. Let us look at Philippians 2, 4. God help us. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. He says, care about them as much as you care about yourself. There should be oneness in the home, even financially. This money that you run around to make, if you die, bam, now, what happens? <laughs> I remember a story of, I mean, I, of somebody was in the hospital, had stroke, could talk. And what he was saying to his wife is, don't touch my money. <laughs> Guess what the guy... It was an old man, an old man. He died like a day or two after he said that. Girls who now spent the money they said they shouldn't touch. While you are alive and you are both together, let there be harmony. Spend the money together. Not that one will be wearing uh, brand new clothes, the other uh, party will be wearing rags. We have to be one, one, one. One as a family. And then, something people are con complaining and discussing and the whatever about. Fighting. If you do not give God his own out of that money, it's just like you buy a whole cow and you re refuse to remove the bile. You say that bile, no, it's part of it, I want to eat. Cook it with the meat, it is bitter. The meat will be bitter. You will want, uh, uh, what do they call it? Devora, remove from your money. Pay your tithe. It is 
a law from God. It is important. It is mandatory. They say it's Old Testament. It's okay. When you, whatever will make you go to Old Testament to say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Whatever the, the, will make you go to go to the Old Testament to look for any blessing. That you say, oh, I will be the head and not the tail. Will make you go there to do what the will of God says. Jesus Christ said he did not come to, to, to erase the law. He came to fulfill it. They always talk about, I don't, okay, let me just look at that quickly. Matthew 23. Jesus Christ said, you Pharisees and teachers are now sure us, and you are in for trouble. You give God a tent of spices from your, such as mint, dill, dung, whatever. And yet you neglect the more important matters of the law, such as justice, mercy, faithfulness. These are the important things you should have done, though you should not have left others undone either. What that place is saying is that you should give to the, uh, to, to the needy, yet you should do the right thing. Pay your tithe. All those things are important. Don't love money too much. To be contending, contending. Some people, a, a lot of Christians don't even, you, you, by the time you go ahead and be telling people about how people are eating money instead of doing what is right, you are complaining that Muslims are buying this and uh, uh, the people are doing something. How much are you giving to the things of the kingdom for you to be able to arise and shine the way you should? I don't want to talk about um, uh, tithing today because it's something I will I can do the whole day. I mean, on, on. So it is not about how much you have as a family, but your attitude towards that money and the way you handle it. Your attitude to your husband, to your children, to yourself. Some people will even be stingy to themselves. They will be saving up and not eat good food. Forgetting that it is today we see, we don't see tomorrow. That money you are you are you are stocking up. Who do you know we eat it? Do I say don't save? You remember I, you know how I, I didn't say that. I'm just saying today comes before tomorrow. And what you do today is important too. Ilya Yeki Shawalo. If you refuse to, 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 to do what needs to be done now, that money you are saving, you don't know who will spend it. Because you see today, eat good food, wear good clothes, not wastage, and still save. Do relate with your family. Don't go and be saving money when your spouse is in debt. I know we... we um, we will talk about it. If you have questions, you can send to my uh, email. You can send, I mean, send to me, my phone, 732-766-0068. I'm in United States. And if you, um, any platform you are in, ask your question. I will see it and respond. If, I, if it's on Facebook, ask your question. And my YouTube page, um, uh, Pastor Lara will be woman. You can put your comment there. God bless you. So we cannot let money be our God. We cannot let money be our God. We can be too. We can be too busy for God, you know, and for our spouses and children, just because we are chasing money. And while you are doing that, other things that are supposed to be important are fading away. When your husband or your wife is complaining that you don't have time for me and you go and be taking all, everybody is going for Thanksgiving to have Thanksgiving with their family. You say they are paying double. I'll take it. What about your own family? They are more important than that money. You can have millions of dollars or, or naira or pounds in your account and be sick and nobody will be able to take you to the hospital. Have you ever, have you not heard of people that the people around there will say, mm, you, you can't touch their money. 
we need to be very careful. I've had someone that died and the children didn't know the password to their account. The money is in the bank. Nobody can go there he, because he never shared all those information with the family. He loves the money so much. Of what importance was that? The money your children cannot inherit is in the bank. Nobody can spend it. Wow. We need to be very careful. So, uh, it, my question before I pray for you today is, are you looking for money? I, I mean, are you looking up to money for happiness? Answer that question to yourself. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord keep you, make his countenance shine upon you and give you peace. All that you lay your hands upon will prosper. And you will remember the Lord your God. He is the one that has given you that power to make wealth in the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, you need to give your life to Jesus. It is key. It is mandatory. Jesus is coming soon. Everything we see showing us Jesus is coming. Give your life to Jesus and as you do so, God will bless you. I'll see you next week in the name of Jesus. Remain blessed. Remain rapturable. And don't let money be your God. Subscribe to my YouTube page. Pastor Lara will be woman. Share this video. Bless you. Love you.